What's going on YouTube? Welcome to the Let's Build the USS Voyager Season 1 Episode 36. I'm Zero Elite and I just want to thank you very much for tuning in today's episode. If you haven't, please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and help me in supporting the channel. I can't thank you guys enough for that. Today we've got about a 20 minute episode and uh, we're going to be picking up right where we left off. We're going to be doing some work on the pylons and then we're also going to be moving to doing some work on the backbone of the neck. Now, you could see here on the right side, off camera, I've went in and I've readjusted the back end of the pylon, so how they arch. Now, again, just throwing out a disclaimer, if you're happy with how the back end of the pylons look, you don't have to make this change. Just move past it. But if you're like me, and maybe this back end, again, like, it's still, it's just sticking with me like, okay, it's not looking right it needs to arch forward just a little bit more so what I've done is I've adjusted my template from just the, where the tail end meets the wings that's the best way I can describe what the, these two pieces are I think anybody that is looking at this will be on the same page with me but yeah so the wing portion we had a template of three I if I'm not mistaken we're doing a template of two and that looks a lot better here so I think that's what we're gonna do here we're gonna go and we're gonna make the same change so we're gonna go two 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 and we're just going to continue this on all the way over everything else is access and we're going to delete everything behind that and then rebuild the back end in the same way that we had before no difference in the in the design of it so again, we're going to go in, everything behind this blue line, we're going to get rid of it. What we're doing here, believe it or not, this isn't that far off from like working with clay. Um, and if you don't know what I mean by that, look up on YouTube videos of people working with clay to build a statue or even if it's stone and they're carving away at a stone statue at this point in the game that's more or less what we're doing we're manipulating the shape and that's why sometimes like I'll have people and they'll kinda complain a little bit about the changes that we're making like I don't really understand it because it's like you kinda have to you know like things aren't always gonna come out perfectly the way that you want it the very first go around um, that's just the way life is you know what I mean and but you so you have to be opened to making to change basically you have to be open to it there's no other way around it otherwise you're just basically disservicing yourself because you're just gonna sit on something that maybe you're not happy with this is why we're gonna just go in make the change that we need to make suck it up it is what it is at this point like I've honestly I've just I, I used to get upset with myself when I'd have to make changes like this cuz it's like man I don't want to backpedal but what's made it easier for me to the point where it doesn't even bother me anymore it's like well I can look at it two ways I can either there's, there's actually three ways I can look at it I could either just not let it bother me and not do anything about it and just move on or I can pretend like it doesn't bother me <laughs> and then it's just gonna kill me because I'm not making the change that I know that I need to make or I can just make the necessary change and just be done with it you know what I mean so that's just kind of where I'm at on it. Alright, so now after we've adjusted our back end, you fill that in, we're going to be getting rid of one row 
of the half slabs on top where the bracket is going inward and then that bracket's going to become a row too. But again, like the change that we're making with the bracket here, uh, eventually like it's going to be gone. Well, it won't be gone. Let let me rephrase. It'll be moved over closer to um the inside because now it like it just like you should be able to see what I'm seeing hopefully like it looks very very far out. It shouldn't be that far out. But my mistake here, and it's not necessarily a mistake, it's not a bad thing to try to use what you got, basically. That's more or less what I'm doing here. I'm trying to use what I got and make it work. But sometimes it reaches a point where it's like what you got isn't working. Then you have to make a significant change. It just it is what it is. And that's what's going to happen with that bracket. We're just going to have no choice at one point that we're just going to have to move it over. But yeah, the back end now of the pylons, that's with the two chain, because we adjusted them in the last episode and then we made another adjustment today, switching from a pattern of three to a pattern of two. I don't think that looks bad. I think that actually looks pretty good. Now I'm doing white concrete on either side of the bracket, which believe it or not, we will be using that later on it'll be more or less the same template we're just going to move it over by one so I mean to be honest with you for me this isn't a loss at this point because the pattern itself that I'm putting here will be able to, to use later on we we'll just have to move it over but you know with that being said like I said everything that I'm doing here this is just a suggestion you don't have to make any of these modifications if you don't want to but if you want to have what I had in the tour episode then yeah you want to make those changes it's just it is what it is so now I want to strengthen up the back end the back specifically the back top end of the pylons so I'm going with a cut line, I'm going in one with a cut, and we're doing a row of the light gray concrete so that this cut line sticks out just a little bit more and helps to make that line look a little bit more prominent. We're not going to do the whole thing. We're just going to do it right up to where the back end meets the wings. And then we're going to stop. Analyze it. Decide if we like it. And if we want to bring it all the way over, we can do that. So I'm happy enough with it at this point. I want to bring it all the way over and see how it looks. Now the one problem with this design is that it's going to kind of um, it's going to bleed into the bracket for the uh, where the uh, engines bend, so that might look a little off there. Um, so some of you may not want to have this pa uh, pattern on the sides if that's going to bug you. This is one of the coolest things I think of, that there is like building with Minecraft and just building in general. Like, you know, what I'm doing here, you don't have to follow it 100%. There's no rule that says that you have to do what I'm every single step that I'm telling you to do. This is why I encourage making this your own. You, if you think that there's a change that I'm not making that you want to make, make it. At the end of the day, this is you're building the ship, so. I mean, do whatever you want with it, you know? That's why I don't understand when people message me and they'll be like, oh, this room is outside of canon. It's like, so what? This is my version of it. I'm going to do whatever I want. <clears throat> and honestly, it's, a fa it's not a real thing, so you can get away with stuff like that. It doesn't look too bad. 
We're going to move on from the pylons for a little bit and we're going to go back over to the engines. And we're going to be continuing on what we were doing, or not the engines, the backbone of the neck. And we're going to be continuing on what we were doing before with thickening them up with the half slabs. So you can see I started with the first starting point that I could with the half slabs and I'm bringing that transition point upwards because I'm trying to blend them in from the back end going forward and trying to bring it in as much as I possibly can. But it is going to reach a point where we're not going to be able to bring it over anymore because it will start looking too thick. So it's finding that balance where we have to say, okay, we've blended it in enough, let's just bring it straight forward. And don't worry about these parts right here going for, uh, further down the transition point. I'm putting a blue block right here so that I have this as a way to remind myself that the gray concrete right here isn't going with a half slab. So this is a reminder that I'm going to have to come back on this cut line and then basically redo this row, this row, more or less just to get the cut lines uh, matched up. I want to have to redo everything, just these couple of rows right here. It's not a big deal. But yeah, it's this part, this flat area right here that's kind of bugging me and why I'm wanting to add in a few more layers. This is one of the areas that I wasn't fully satisfied with. No matter, it, even with what I had in the tour episode, it, I'm not 100% satisfied with it. Like if I had to give it a rating of satisfaction, I probably would put it in like maybe 93 or 94%. Because it was this area specifically where the neck meets the saucer that I wasn't 100% satisfied with the blending and I kind of felt like I blended it as much as I could to the point that it would look good. Because if what would have happened if I continued on with the blending of it, it would have made the neck too wide. And I was trying my darndest to avoid that from happening. But all these rows that we're adding, like this is kind of vital to everything that we're doing here, bringing those being consistent, going with that pattern all the way up so that this way it's just this stuff is all going to blend in together as we go. We're looking pretty good. We're just going to let this play out. Um, haven't had a chance to talk too much about stuff that's going on in Star Trek lately. Um, since we're building a starship, we can talk about some of that. Um, I don't know those of you that saw um, Strange New Worlds Season 2. I, I enjoyed Season 2 of Strange New Worlds for the most part. Um, I thought it was better than Season 1 because, don't get me wrong, I didn't dislike season one but it was really I only loved the first and last episode the rest of it for me was just kind of like eh, I mean I've, I've kind of seen this before and I liked season two but I kind of felt like the same thing with season one um, I felt like a lot of the episode ideas was more or less just retreading stuff that they'd either done in Next Generation or the original series. Um, and then I'm not going to lie, the other thing that's kind of stuck out with me with Strange New World, especially with Season 2, is that it really feels like the show turned into Star Trek Nurse Chapel. Don't get me wrong, I like Nurse Chapel. I think she's cool. But, and I also understand that Anson Mount was on leave because he had a kid, but, um... Just my problem with it is like it in a sense like season two of Strange New Worlds kind of reminded me of the later seasons of The Walking Dead, where the show's main it, it's not focusing on the show's main characters. You know what I mean? And even like Next Generation and Voyager, like they always had 
um, episodes that focused on other characters in the crew. So, like, I'm fine with all that. Like, I liked Mbaga's episode with the Klingons, like, going back into the war. I thought that was really cool. But it just really felt like Season 2 of Strange New Worlds just really focused on Nurse Chapel. Um, and I just kind of... I think what I want to see out of Strange New Worlds going forward... Um, they can still do those episodes where, the, you know, the character has their own uh, episode. But I want to see more ensemble episodes. Um, a, a problem for the crew to face where the whole crew can face it together. Um, as opposed to just one person. Um, that would be nice. And to be honest with you, I want to see more... Pike. I think that's the whole reason that I, I've signed up to watch Strange New Worlds to begin with. And I don't know, like kind of like my thing with like what they did with season two with Nurse Chapel. It's like, if you want to do a Nurse Chapel show, make a Nurse Chapel show. You know what I mean? Um, but I feel like season two anyway, like I, I didn't hate it and it's probably going to sound like I'm crapping all over it. I'm really not because I didn't hate it. I just kind of think that that's just kind of where where it was for me like um the finale of it was still like that was the best episode but again like nurse chapel kind of felt like she was the star of season two and it's like i didn't sign up for strange new worlds for nurse chapel i wanted to see pike captaining the enterprise that's the whole reason i'm watching this show so i don't know hopefully like if they want it like with season three i hope that there will be more Pike, more Spock, and more of just the entire crew working together as opposed to episode just focusing on one person. And if they do want to do a Nurse Chapel show, do a spinoff. Um, I'd probably watch it. I'm sure there's people that would probably watch it. But then at that point, it's like, okay, I'm tuning in to watch that, you know? Um, so I don't know. That's just kind of my two cents. But I think... Um, the episode that honestly stood out to me the most in season two of Strange New Worlds was the finale uh, with Agorn. I thought that episode was was pretty cool. I did enjoy it. Um, Lower Decks, uh, the current season of Lower Decks has been pretty good. Um, definitely very funny. But uh, I think for me so far, Picard season three has been the best Star Trek that Paramount has put out since this is probably going to sound pretty bold and there's probably going to be some people that are ultimately going to disagree with me but to be honest with you I think it's the best Star Trek that Paramount has put out since um, Star Trek First Contact honestly um, everything else since First Contact just kind of feels like it's been a steady decline going downward um, because the rest of the TNG movies weren't great. Um, I didn't hate the Kelvin timeline. I actually really like the Kelvin timeline, but it's not Star Trek. It's an action movie. Two different things. Um, but, uh, yeah, Picard Season 3, like, they, they, they finally hit it on the head for the most part. There was a couple of minor things here and there that I wasn't crazy about, like... Um, Seven being not even seven being captain of the Enterprise D got no problem with that. I think what stood out for me that maybe kind of just turned my head sideways was when Raffi ended up being her first officer, and it's like that would never happen in any type of either military or exploratory organization where their captain is going to make their first officer their love interest. That is the biggest. A conflict of interest that you could ever have and if I'm not mistaken there's a Star Trek protocol that actually prohibits it so for whatever reason they just kind of threw that one out the door um, I don't know um, like they could have had Raffi on the show but what they should have done was put her in a role to where kind of like where it was similar to like Troy and Riker to where they could have been in a relationship together, but it wasn't a conflict of interest because of their roles on the ship. Riker was number one. Deanna was just the ship's counselor, so there was no conflict of interest. So if they could have given a job for Raffi to where she was still on the show, but it wasn't a conflict of interest, I would have 
would have been cool with that. But yeah, no, that was the only thing that just kind of made me turn my head sideways with Picard season three when I saw. It. I was like, that would never happen. But the rest of it, I actually really loved it. Um, I've talked about in the past, like there's just so many things with Picard season three that I just thought that they would never do. Like especially after seeing season one I, of Picard, I thought the whole Data storyline was done. And when they brought him back and everything, like that just brought me right back to Star Trek Nemesis. Because at the ending of Nemesis, like I just immediately started thinking of what the next movie was going to be. And the last season of Picard more or less gave me what I envisioned, where basically the crew would go on an adventure to bring Data back. And that's that's all I wanted. You know, it's like um, with Picard, all I really honestly wanted was just one more story with the Next Generation crew, and I'm a happy camper. And then they went a step further and they brought the Enterprise D back. So, like, I just... There's not a lot of negative things that I have to say about that season. The one and only negative thing I could say, and it's not even a negative, it's just a fan preference. Like, for me, I wouldn't have renamed the Titan A the Enterprise G. It, it was, to be, honestly, to me, it was insulting that you would take a ship that was um, brought back, given the honor of... Uh, being brought back and being the Titan A and then you're going to disrespect it by changing its name. I wouldn't have done that. If it were me personally, what I would have done was reinstated the Enterprise D. I mean the ship literally kicked the crap out of a Megaborg by itself. So obviously the modifications that Geordi made to the ship, I mean She's obviously still a heavyweight, and then to me, it would have tied into all good things, and then they could have had one final Next Generation movie that was a remake of all good things. That's what I would have done. And then you have Jack Crusher and all that into it, and there's some really cool things that they could have done there. Make Riker the captain in the Enterprise D, make uh, Jack Crusher his first officer. And there you go. That That's your new show. But with that being said, um, I mean, uh, Picard Season 3 was pretty cool. Anyway, we've gotten some work done today. Kind of rambled on enough, but I think that's going to do it for me today. If you do have any questions regarding today's episode, drop a comment below. I do love hearing from everybody. Or if there's any builds that you want to see me do, I need small build ideas. So if anybody has one, drop a comment below or in Discord. Anyway, I think that's going to do it for me today. I just want to thank you all again for tuning in today's episode. And if you did enjoy this content, please help me out. Hit that like and subscribe button. Drop a comment below. Hit that bell notif so you always get notified when my new videos drop. All these things truly help my channel. So if you want to help support me, if you can do that, I greatly appreciate it. But anyway, I hope everybody has a happy and safe week. And of course, what did you make in Minecraft today? Let me know in the comments section. Post your pictures in Discord. We'd love to see them.